Hey everyone, Reed here. Today we're going to discuss some features related to adding borders and outlines around some of the objects and frames that you have in Power BI. Now in the past, what I've done to create an effect like the you see in front of you here is I would put an object behind it and then make it about eight pixels wider on any of the borders to create a framed effect in a background. Now I figured out a way to do this inside of Power BI without adding any additional objects or having to do anything with the background to create this effect. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So let's start by exploring the previous method that I have used to create this. So I'm gonna come up first to the view options up here and open up my selection pane. Now over here under the visual section that I have here for this group, if I open this up, you'll see that I have a few things in here. Let's go ahead and expand this out a bit. You have all of the visuals that I have into here that are grouped together with a background object. Now, if I toggle the visibility, you can see that that has disappeared and coming back. Now the object itself was just a button that I used to create a framework of this. I could have used a text box as well, but this is now being used to create the frame effect that I wanted to. However, if we open up the performance analyzer, get rid of these other windows here for a second and click start and refresh the visuals, there is a little bit of time that is required to render the background here. And then notice that most of these are somewhere between 100 and 200. Now I want to avoid the need of having to add additional objects onto the page because that does as 40 milliseconds, that starts to add up time. And you know, I have a handful of these under my page and I could look at like half a second of additional load time. So as much as possible, I just like to tune and fine tune these things. So let's go ahead and close out of this for now. I'm gonna to come to my group shadow page down here. Now I'm gonna come up to my selection pane this time, open this up, open up visuals. Now notice that I only have four visuals in here. I don't have that background button anymore, but I still have the framing behind this. Now what I've done in each of these visuals, watch this, if I hide each visual individually, you'll see that each visual actually has a border around it. So that is overlaying each other and creating this unified border around all of them. So let's actually go ahead and select one of these, come up to visualizations, come up to the format painter, Notice the fact that I don't have a border turned on. What I actually have turned on is a shadow. I'm gonna turn this off and you can see that that has gone away. If I even move this around a little bit, let's turn the shadow back on just for a second. You can see that the shadow itself is actually the thing that is creating this pseudo border around all of this stuff. So I'm gonna turn it off once again. Let's go ahead and put that visual back in place. There we are. Now, if I open this up, scroll down and look at the configuration, what I've actually done is I've done it as a custom preset. I have eight pixels, which is a snap, and you know from my other videos that I like to keep things spaced by about eight pixels, which is one snap with the snap to grid up here is turned on, and then I turn the blur to zero, angle and distance and transparency all to zero, and just picked a color. And when you overlay these with every single visual in here, the colors overlap and then they provide that nice little border around it. Now, if we come up to the performance analyzer and turn that on, click start recording and refresh our visuals onto the page, you can see that we've lost that 40 milliseconds that was related to loading that other object and the time and duration to load each of those visuals is approximately the same as it was before. So we're not getting any performance impacts from adding the shadow comparatively to adding a visual. So over time, as you reduce the number of unique objects on the page, you will move towards a faster report load because you have less unique objects to render. And as always, I'm hoping this is something that you found useful for your video. This is actually the third time that I've done a video now on some unique things related to shadows and everything else. So go ahead and check the description down below. I have a couple of other links to when I use shadows to actually create an interesting frame for a button to add a little border at the top for some unique aesthetic design. And I've also used them as well to add borders for a title where you can add a two-tone color to a bar at the top when using less visuals. So check both of those out. If you liked this video, please hit that subscribe button down below or add a comment or a like as well. Both of those all help with uh, my channel to grow. So I appreciate all of it and I will see you in my next video.